Okay, welcome back. Uh, my name is Antonio Arroyo, and today I'm going to be covering 10 ways to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your business. Now, this is the second time I'm recording this, so hopefully it's perfect because the first time the audio got a bit mixed up. So let's get right into it. So what do I do? Quick background about what I do in my business. So I help business owners find assets within the current business model that seem like ordinary items to them. But those assets have very little downside and huge upside potential when exploited. And not only do I just identify the assets, I also exploit, manage, and, minimize, and maximize those assets to bring the company windfall profits they never had before. And on top of that, I do it all on a 100% performance basis. So that means if I don't perform, nobody pays me money. I'll risk my time, my effort, my opportunity cost in order to set up these profit centers. Now. Last but not least, the business owners have 100% control of the profit centers because, yet again, it is their business. So if they don't like what I'm doing, they say, hey, listen, I, I don't approve that, and then I'll adjust what I do. So it's absolutely no risk to the business that work with me because I'm confident enough in my capabilities and my abilities to prove profit. That's why I'm okay with taking on all the risk because I know I can perform and I know I can make business owners a ton of cash. And I'm on a mission to generate $1 billion for small businesses by the year 2030. So now that you know a little bit about me, before I really go over the 10 ways, I want to explain what I know about martial arts schools. Um, I'm by no means am an expert about martial arts and the way these uh, business models are and how martial arts schools advertise or market and the business model and how they scale. I know very little about that. All I know about martial arts school is uh, they operate at night for the most part. But the only reason I came up with this idea about actually doing this video is because I'm in the La Tip of Fremont and the president of the group has a dojo and that's where we meet. We meet inside his dojo. So I'm like, hey, I can monetize this space. I don't know anything about his business, but I know he has this space so I can make a video about that, helping him out. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And anyone with a dojo can repeat these 10 ways and also Anyone really with unused office space can just modify these 10 ways a bit, tweak them a little, and have these producing for you and you're just unused office space. So this could be valuable to anyone with an unused space, but specifically, this video is meant for people with dojos. Now, dojos, what I know about them are a lot of them make most of their money with teaching lessons, you know, either private lessons or just classes. They might also sell like merchandise, but to me, that's all I know about a martial arts school. They make mo nearly all of their money teaching lessons or private lessons. And most of their uh, clients are young kids who have school during the day. So this causes martial arts schools to only be open at night when kids are out of school. So that's all I know about martial arts schools for the most part. I'm by no means an expert and I'm sure a lot more people know a lot more about martial arts school. So if you want me to work with you, like I said, if I just look at your business, I can identify a ton of more assets. This is just one asset I recognize from five seconds of walking in. I walked into this room, noticed this guy had a dojo, noticed, hey, we're using it for a Latip meeting. So clearly he's aware that the space can be used for something else and uh, I want to help him monetize it. So this video is partially for him, partially for anyone with a dojo that wants to make some extra money without doing anything. So what are the assets with little downside and huge potential? Like I said, that's why I do. I identify assets within a business that have little downside and huge upside potential and I exploit them, maximize them, and manage them. So in this case with the martial arts school, like I said, I don't know much about it, but what I do know is they have space and they have equipment. And the space, uh, martial arts school instructors or whoever owns the martial arts school are most likely already paying for the space no matter how much they use it. The rent you pay for a martial arts space would be the same if you teach five classes a month or if you taught 50 classes a month. Most likely you pay a set fee per month and it doesn't matter if you're using the space or not. The fee is going to be the same regardless. And on top of that, a martial arts school have a lot of downtime. Considering that the majority of their clients are students who have school during the day, they only operate at nighttime. And since the space is not being used, that also means the equipment is not being used because in order to use the equipment, you have to be using the space. So same thing with the equipment. There's lots of downtime and the equipment's already bought. So you might as well benefit from other people using it because people want to use it and if you're not using it, it's just sitting there. You already paid for it, might as well make money from it. So let's go. Uh, first way. First way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business. Now, this essentially become your own landlord. Now what does that mean? Let me unpack it for you. 
you most likely, if you have a martial arts school, do not own the building you operate out of. Now you might, and that would make this first way easier for you, but most likely you don't, so I'm gonna just go off that. So most likely you rent your studio or the space you run your martial arts school out of from somebody, maybe a landlord, maybe a property owner. Somebody has control and you pay them money each month in order to utilize the space. So what you'd do is sublease the space out to another business. You'd basically become a landlord. So you rent your space out from somebody and what you'd do is you'd rent your space out to another person. So you basically are becoming a landlord in some type of way. That's called subleasing. Renting the space you already rent out to somebody else. Now, who could you rent the space out to? Another martial arts school, maybe the one that specializes in training adults that you know they operate during the morning times, a yoga studio, a personal trainer, a boxing school, a boxing coach, a mommy and me class, and a daycare center, and you could rent it out to them for a set fee per month. Now, it's best if you find someone who has services that are similar to yours, because the more value you provide them, the more you could charge them. If you rent it out to somebody that just wants the space to sit on their computer and use the Wi-Fi, most likely you can't charge them that much because they're not getting, you're not providing that much value. You're just basically providing a quiet space and free Wi-Fi. But if you uh, sublease your space out to a boxing school, you know they're going to be using the space and the equipment. So in that way, you're providing more value. And the more value you provide, the more you could charge. So, so that's great because, I mean, this is money that you've never had. And you aren't going to be doing anything for. All you're going to be doing is letting somebody else use the space. You aren't providing any product. Well, in a way, you're providing your space. But you're not, like, manufacturing this product and selling it to them. They're just utilizing an asset that you already use. It's not being used, and it's just collecting dust during the day. So why not turn that into a new profit center? Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is you want to find somebody that operates at a different time than you do. So if you teach your martial arts classes at night, you want to find somebody who operates their business and their services during the day. That way you guys don't interfere with each other. If you can't find somebody like that, there are ways around this. You could stagger the time. Maybe you're willing, maybe you really want the money and you're willing to change your um, class schedule, but I do not recommend that. These ways are meant to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business. So find somebody that doesn't operate their business at the same hours you do. Find somebody who operates their hours during the day if you teach at night or during the night if you teach during the day. So yeah, and when you sublease out to this person, you can control the hours that they're able to operate under. So if you operate from your hours from four to eight, like I said, control it, tell them, hey, you can only use my space from 8 to 3 because I use it from 4 to 8. And before you jump into this, uh, there's things you have to check. You have to check if you could legally do so. If you could legally sublease your space out to another business or to another tenant. Because if your landlord in your contract with your landlord, if it mentions that you can't uh, sublease your space, you're going to have to renegotiate your lease. And there's ways you could renegotiate it. I can make a video explaining that, but... Uh, that's a whole different video and on top of that check within your city you know some cities have a uh, specific laws maybe in your city you can't sublease your space out so make sure you're aware of that and then uh, once you do that you also have to think um how long do you want this sublease to be you might lease your space out by the year but you might want to sublease your space out to another business for only on a month-to-month -month basis so you have to think of this stuff you can't sublease your space out to another business for two years if you only lease your space out for a year. How are you going to be able to do that if in the next year you might not have access to that space? So make sure the sublease you sign with another tenant is shorter than your lease because then you're going to run into problems if you don't do that. And as always, make sure everyone involved has insurance. I'm not going to lie and say that everyone's a trustworthy person and everyone's going to treat your space like it's theirs. The business owner you might sublease it out to might be respectful and might be trustworthy, but how do you know that their clients aren't trustworthy and respectful as well? They might break something or they might take something from your space, so make sure you have insurance and they have insurance so that way somebody can be held accountable in the case of something happening. Now, I don't think that's likely to happen, but better safe than sorry. I don't want you to risk your current business. Um, this is just windfall money that you've never had before, and I want to make sure you're safe. So. In this example, say you found one tenant and you got them to pay you $1,000 per month 
using your space. Now a thousand dollar a month is very conservative because like I said, the more value you provide, the more you could charge them. So the more value you could provide, you could charge a lot more than a thousand dollars, depending on your area. So if you're in a good area that has high rent, you could probably charge like I don't know, a couple thousand. It all depends on your situation. So consider you get paid a thousand dollars a month. After twelve months that'd be twelve thousand dollars. So that's quite a bit of money. And after six years, if you kept at it with just one tenant paying you a thousand dollars per month, you'd have seventy two thousand dollars in your bank account for doing absolutely nothing. You wouldn't have to provide any more services, you wouldn't have to teach any more classes, you wouldn't have to do anything new. If you just re retained and maintained your current business, you'd have an extra $72,000 in your bank account in the next six years, which is pretty crazy because you're not doing anything like I said. You're just letting somebody else utilize your space when you're not using it. You're already not using the space, you're already not using the equipment, so why not just do this? But let's continue. Uh, second way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business. And this is the same as the first way, but instead of doing this with just one business, you could do this with multiple businesses and just make sure you stagger the time each company is allowed to use the space so that way nobody interferes with each other. So like I said, you rent your space from a landlord, so you're already a tenant and what you do is become a landlord and sublease it out to other tenants. So they're below you and they pay you money and you benefit from them because they'll use the space when you're not using it. And as always, make sure you check that this is legal and that everyone has insurance and that you think about how long you want to sublease it out to them because a longer, if you um, sign them up on a contract like a year of sublease, that provides security. Now you know you're going to get paid X amount every month, but if you do it on a month to month basis, then it's easier to get out and you have more flexibility. So you have to think, do I want flexibility? If so, more short term sublease contracts. But if you want security, if I, if you want to depend on that money and if you want it predictable, then you might want to sign a longer sublease with that new business slash tenant. So in this example, say you got two tenants and they're each paying you $1,000 per month. After 12 months, that'd be $24,000. And after six years, that'd be $144,000. That's pretty, that's pretty, that's a lot of money. An extra $2,000 a month for the average person, for the average business owner, that's life-changing money. That, that's actually crazy. So, and this without doing anything. <laughs> you aren't doing anything. All you're doing is signing a piece of paper, calling. All you have to do is go out there, talk to a couple businesses, see if they want to expand. And you say, you go talk to a couple um, yoga studios go talk to a couple of boxing coaches and say, hey, are you looking to expand your business? If so, you could rent out my space at a discount than you would a regular space because now you get my space plus the equipment within it at a discount from a regular rent. So it's a win-win for everyone. They'd be saving money and you'd be making extra money. So there's no loss to this. Okay, third way. The third way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business is doing something called a self-serve. Now, I came up with the name self-serve. So, a quick disclaimer about this method. This method is probably, this way to monetize your business is probably the easiest way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business. This requires the least amount of work, but since it takes the least amount of work, this is also the way that you're gonna make the least amount of money but that's okay because it is super easy. You could do this literally today. So what you do in the self-serve is basically you'd go to the people that you already teach, these people that you already teach classes to, and all you do is offer them the option to rent your dojo out by the hour. Now, make it clear that this is not one-on-one -on -one coaching, this is not a private lesson, but simply the option to have the dojo to themselves. That way, you know, your students can practice whatever they wanna practice, Maybe they want to practice extra for that new upcoming belt test. Or they want to show their family, hey, this is what I've been working on in my martial arts school. Or maybe they want to teach their own family. They want to become their own instructor and teach their family martial arts. You know, that could be a fun little family event. So just advertise to the people you already sell to, your current students, that, hey, you could rent out the space by the hour. 
and make, make sure you tell them what hours they're able to rent it out under because yet again, you don't want them conflicting with your current time you're operating your business in. If you're operating between four to eight, uh, make sure that they're only able to rent your space out from you know eight to three. So that way you guys don't conflict with each other. So let's say for example, you tell your, your students this and you say for $20 an hour, you could rent my space and in the first month, 12 people each rent it out for an hour. So that's 12 hours each at $20 per hour. In the first month, you'd have $240. Now that might not seem like a lot of money, but after 12 months, that'd be $2,880. And if you kept at it and you never grew your business, because if you grow your business, most likely this profit center will grow as well because then you'll have more people you could sell to because you're selling to your students. So the more students you have, the more people you can offer to rent out your dojo by the hour. So if you never improved after six years, renting your dojo out for 12 hours a month, that's three hours a week. That isn't that much at all. 12 hours a month at $20 an hour, you'd have $17,280. And this is money you'd get for doing absolutely nothing. For just free money. Free money. It's, I don't even know if you have to get a sublease for this. So I don't, I don't even think you would have to get a sublease. Um, Make sure you could sublease your space out if you're just doing this. But yet again, it is important. Do check before you take action with this. Do check with your landlord that you know you could do this legally and check with your city that you could do this legally because it's not worth it facing any risk over doing this. These are ways to monetize your dojo without getting in trouble. I don't want anyone watching this video to uh, possibly lose their business over $17,000. So uh, make sure you look into this and don't just be all gun ho about it and just do it so make sure you know you at least take some at, you t research a bit I'm not telling you you need lawyers involved and you need the best accountants in the world in order to execute this profit center but I'm just saying make sure you check with your landlord that you know notify them hey this is what I want to do um, I believe it's okay because my lease doesn't say I can't do this and make sure you, you look on your city saying hey can I legally do this if that is the case and you could legally do so, boom, take action. So there's not much work that involves this third way. You could pull it off basically today. Now, fourth way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business is rather than just offering your students to rent out the space by the hour, you can offer the whole internet, the whole world access to your space by the hour. Now, you could do that with websites such as Peerspace. Now, Peerspace is like the Airbnb of office space. You know, with Airbnb, uh, people rent out their homes or a room in their home that you could sleep in or, you know, just use like as a hotel. You could do that with Peerspace. But now, with Peerspace, it's for office space. It's not really to sleep in. It's most likely to work or, you know, do a certain activity within. So... With Peerspace, like I said, you could list it by the hour. You can control the price you want per hour. If you want, you know, $20, $30 an hour, you could do exactly that. You can control the minimum amount of hours required to book the space. And you can control the hours and days the space is available. That way, it doesn't conflict with your current martial arts schedule. And you could also make the rules for your space. For example, no smoking, no vaping. That's pretty basic. So this is great because now you could get paid to get, generate business because anyone that's willing to pay to utilize your space is a potential client. If they rent your space out by the hour, you know that, hey, they're interested in martial arts. So then you could pitch them. You could say, hey, I realize you rented my space. I have a martial arts school. I teach a blank. If you're interested, I'd like to offer you a free lesson. Come by. And you know, most likely if they paid for the space by themselves, they'd be interested in joining your class. Now, on top of that, if you're worried about letting random people utilize your space, you shouldn't worry too much because Peerspace does have insurance. Peerspace offers $1 million host liability insurance and 25,000 property damage guarantee, but that does not downplay the fact that you should have insurance by yourself. Make sure you still have insurance. That way, you know, everyone's protected, but with Peerspace, if somebody messes up your space, you'll know who to go after because 
Pure Space gathers all their information. Now, say, for example, you put your space on Pure Space, you rent it out for $30 an hour, and in the first month you rent it out 12 hours. Now, that is conservative. These are conservative numbers. You could definitely grow the amount of hours you rent it out because, say, you put out flyers or you tell everyone you talk to, hey, you know, I'm not sure if you want to learn martial arts or if you just want to fool around and hit bags. You know, if you're just interested in just hitting bags and goofing around, of course, you don't tell the people this. But if you're just interested in, you know, going at your own pace, you could rent out my dojo by the hour and just practice whatever you want. So, this could be appealing to people that don't have a schedule that could fit within your time and they just want to practice and teach themselves martial arts or if they just want to, you know, hit a bag. This could be great for them. So I'm getting carried off topic, but 12 hours each month at $30 an hour. First month, that'd be $360. After 12 months, that'd be $4,320. After six years, that'd be $25,920 for doing absolutely nothing. You aren't teaching any more lessons. You aren't buying any more equipment. You aren't paying any more in rent. This is just windfall money that you've never had before. So there's no reason not to do any of these ways because yet again, they aren't affecting or risking your current business. This all risk-free money that has little downside and huge upside potential to bring in new profit centers. And if at this point you're thinking, Antonio, this takes too much work. I don't want to do this. I'm already satisfied with the money I'm making. Sure, this is great money, but I don't want to do it. That's what I'm here for. If you don't want to do this and you just want somebody to do it for you, that's what I do. I'll do it for you. I'll manage this profit center. I'll maximize it. I'll execute it all for you. And I do it on a pure performance basis. I'll spend my money, my time, my opportunity costs, my efforts in order to pull this off. And if it doesn't work out, you don't pay me. So it's completely risk-free. If you want me to do it for you, but yet again, uh, this is so easy that you could do it yourself. So I highly encourage you to do it for yourself. If you don't do it yourself and you find it struggling and it's a bit challenging, let me know because I could easily execute it for you. But I believe in you. You could do this yourself. Go ahead and execute. Fifth way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business. It's just like the first and second way where you sublease your space out to another martial arts school or a yoga studio or a personal trainer or a boxing school. But instead of subleasing it out to them for a set fee per month, you would lease it out to them for a super low rent or no rent at all and take a percentage of the revenue. Now this is great for a business that you think is going to grow because you're essentially taking a percentage of all the money they generate. So if they're going to grow, they're going to make more money. And when they grow, you're going to make more money because you're taking a percentage of the revenue. Now keep in mind that there is an inverse factor that comes to revenue share and rent. The more revenue share you want, the less rent you could charge, and the more rent you charge, the less revenue share you can get. Now, I'm sure there's outlier examples that show otherwise, but this is just a general concept showing that, you know, the more revenue you take, the less rent you could charge. So keep that in mind, and as before, like in the first and second way, uh, you could do this with multiple businesses. If you find multiple businesses that have schedules that don't conflict, you could sign them all up on a revenue share and a super low rent or no rent at all. And you can mix and match. Say one business you want to have just a super low rent that you charge them and with a high revenue share and with the other business you just want to charge them a set fee. You could do that. So let's go over in a quick example. Say you have two tenants that each pay you a flat fee of $750 per month and 10% of the revenue. Now say each business has 25 people and each business sells to them $50 a month membership cost. So that'd be $1,250 this business would uh, generate, and you get 10% of that, which would be $125, and their flat fee per month is already $750. So when you add those two together, your cut would be $875 per business. Multiply that by two because there's two businesses, and that'd be $1,750 per month. Now after 12 months, that'd be $21,120. Now that's if the businesses don't approve, improve at all. That's if they never generate any more business. But most likely the business is going to grow because uh, most business owners want to grow their business. I don't know much business owners that want to make less money or are satisfied with the amount of money they're making. Especially if it's what they're doing full time. They, you know, they want to put food on the table. 
So yeah, after six years, if they never improved, it'd be $126,720. That would be windfall money for you that you do nothing for, teach no other classes, you know, teach no more classes, just free money in your bank account. Okay, sixth way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business. Now, this way is really simple and it's a great benefit to the other person. But basically, what you're going to do is instead of leasing it out to a business so they could operate their business in your dojo, you're going to partner with a local gym and have them promote to their members the option to upgrade to a martial arts package where if they do that, they could have access to your dojo. And as a result, you're going to get a paid a percentage of the martial arts package membership fees each month. So say the martial arts package costs $10 extra each month and you say, hey, I want 50% of that. So each month you'd be getting paid five bucks off each membership. Now you could charge the gym a set fee for allowing them to use your space. Like you just tell the gym, give me $2,000 a month and all your people can have access to my space. Or you could tell them, hey, I want you guys to promote this martial arts package. And as a result, I'll get a percentage of the revenue. Now, this route might be better considering that it's of less of risk to the gym. You know, if they promote this package and nobody buys it, then they don't have to pay you anything. But if they do make a lot of money, so will you. So it's mutually beneficial because now there's a couple benefits for the gym. That's a unique selling point. There aren't too many gyms that have access to a dojo, so they could use that to gain more business. Another point is now you're saving them money because if they wanted to open up their own dojo they'd have to buy more space and buy all new equipment and buy all new padded floors and blow a bunch of money but you're saving them a ton of money because you already bought all that stuff for them now they could just use that and you could leverage uh, your space to make additional money now you do want to make sure that you let the gym know that they can only operate whenever you're not teaching classes so if you operate at night tell them their people could use your martial arts dojo during the day but after a certain period they can no longer use it that way it doesn't conflict with the hours you operate under and you could also do this with multiple gyms as well because you might think well a gym has a lot of members so I don't think this would work out but a lot of people don't even use their gym memberships 67 percent of gym memberships go unused so you could partner with multiple local gyms if this is successful and now for this example Say, you tell a gym to promote their members a membership upgrade in order to have access to your dojo, and you get 50% of that. So say 50 members of theirs upgrade, and the upgrade cost is $10 a month. So that's $500 in extra revenue they generated. If you got 50% of that, that'd be $250. So each month, you'd be getting $250. Now that's if they didn't improve. Chances are, uh, gyms are always trying to grow their database, and if they grow their database, they'll have more people to promote this package to. And as a result, this profit center will grow by itself. But on top of that, say it never improved. After six years, you'd be making $18,000 in total for doing absolutely nothing. So this is free money. There's no reason not to do this. And you'd gain a good friend. Now, possibly, you could, go to, you could talk to them and say, hey, I want to give a free gem membership to my students and I'll pay you a set fee per month. Or you could just partner. You say, hey, uh, my people have access to your gym for free and your people have access to my dojo for free. There's a lot of stuff you could do here. This is just one way. I'm just, this is the tip of the iceberg because now, say pe a lot of people are interested, they upgrade. You could go to them and say, hey, do you want us to teach uh, lessons to your gym members? There's a ton of more stuff. You could grow your business doing this. You could make a ton more money. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this way of making money without affecting or risking your current business. Okay, seventh way. The seventh way is to partner with a gym and let them include access to your martial arts dojo in their standard package and you get paid a percentage of their membership cost each and every month. Now you could just do a percentage of their membership cost. You could also charge them a set fee or you could do both. Remember the inverse more revenue share you want the less rent you could charge and the more re rent you charge the less revenue share you could charge so keep that in mind and if you did this and say you partner with a gym and you charge them five hundred dollars a month and two percent of the revenue say they have 500 members and it's a twenty dollar membership fee 
So that'd be um, $10,000 in revenue each month and a 2% revenue share of that would be $200 for you each month plus the $500. So each month you'd be making $700. After 12 months, that's $8,400. And after six years, that's $50,400 of windfall money that you don't have to do anything for. You don't have to teach any more lessons. You don't have to get any more students. You don't have to do nothing. This is just free money. Like, why are you not doing this? At least one of these ways. If you're scared to take a risk and you don't want to do this, at least do the third way. The third way is the least riskful, even though all these ways basically have no risk. That is literally the easiest way, and you could have that up and running by today. All it takes to do any of these is have a few conversations. Go talk to a few gym members. Go talk to a few gym owners. I'm sure they aren't going to bite you. Everyone's friendly. Nobody's out here to hurt you. Nobody wants to see you fail. But let's continue. Eighth way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business is essentially doing the same thing with the gyms but with an apartment complex or a homeowners association. Basically tell them that you'll let their tenants have access to your dojo if they pay you a set fee per month. So this is pretty straightforward. You partner with one of them and you say for $1,000 per month, I'll let your tenants have access to my dojo when I'm not using it. So, so they pay you $1,000 per month. After 12 months, that's $12,000. After six years, that's $72,000. Whole lot of money for doing absolutely nothing. The ninth way, partner with an apartment complex and a gym and get them both to pay you a set fee per month. This could work because chances are not many of their tenants or their members are going to show up to your dojo because most likely they don't take their health that seriously. But doing this does open up doors. Like I said, you could start teaching lessons to these people. Start teaching self-defense classes to them. It doesn't even necessarily have to be martial arts lessons that you teach them. You could just teach them like a three-day course. You know, hey, we're doing a three-day self-defense class. And then you can market it to their members and I'm sure a bunch of them will show up and they'll love it. And as a result, they'll love the HOA or the gym more than they did ever before because now the gym and the homeowners association are providing more value than they ever did before. So it's a win-win for everyone. It's a win for the businesses you partner with. It's a win for the clients. Um, it's a win for everyone involved because now you're making more money as well. Um, this is all about creating friendships and creating relationships that are built to last and uh, make everyone feel like they got the better end of the deal. That's what this is all about. So say you partner with uh, one local apartment complex and a gym, and they include access to your space for a set fee of $1,000 per month. Now both of them are paying you $1,000. After 12 months, that'd be $24,000. And after six years, that'd be $144,000 for doing nothing. For doing nothing. Okay, did I get that through your brain already? You don't have to do anything. This is free money that you don't have to teach another class. You don't have to do anything. Now, like I said, you can do stuff. You can start marketing to these people. You can start getting these people that show up to your gym in your martial arts school if they're that interested. If they show up to your martial arts dojo and want to hit bags, they're clearly interested in some form of self-defense. So you could, you know, you're getting paid to generate leads now. Versus uh, what you're probably doing right now. You're probably paying money on Facebook ads or Instagram ads to generate leads. But now I'm showing you ways to get paid to generate leads. <laughs> what a guy am I. I'm just joking. Okay, tenth way is uh, build somebody else's business to make you money. So what you do is you reach out to a center of influence like a, a YMCA, a school, somewhere with a lot of people. And you talk to them and you see what they want to do. And once you figure out what, what they want to do, you reach out to a business that fits that criteria and offer them to promote to your distribution channels. Now, your distribution channels is that group of people that you just talked to. You tell this business, hey, I have access to a market that you can't get access to, and I'll let you advertise to them for a set fee or a share of revenue. And, you know, there's multiple ways you could do a flat fee in order to talk to them. Or you could say, I want 75% of whatever you sell the first day, and after that, I want 25% continuing month after month after. Hopefully this makes sense. If it doesn't, reach out to me. But yeah, go to a business and help them build their business and have them required to uh, utilize your space so that way each month they're paying you a fee. 
Now, if you're going to do this, make sure you keep um, the person who actually has the database that has the people involved and you help them out as well. Don't just use them. If you use a school and you, and you help that business market to that school, uh, don't just leave the school out and give them no money. Make sure you uh, throw them some money because yet again, it is their people. So make sure it's a win-win situation for everyone and make sure everyone's feeling like they got the better end of the deal. So let me give an example of this. Say you partner with one HOA and one business, so one homeowners association, you talk to them, you say, hey, let's see what your people are interested in doing. You talk to uh, the homeowners association, you find out the people that live there want to learn English. They want to have ESOL classes. A lot of the adults there uh, need help learning English. So you partner with an ESOL business and you charge that ESOL business $2,000 in order to sell to the HOA's people. And as a result, after that, you charge them $1,000 every month to use your space. You say, hey, you could have access to these people, but I want you to teach your classes out of my dojo. So you charge them $2,000 up front and $1,000 every month. And if you do this, if you follow this example, you give the upfront fee to the person with the database. So if you partner with that HOA, give them the $2,000 so that way you know. They get paid for doing nothing as well. So that way they think they came out on top. And as a result, if you're getting paid $1,000 per month, you, that's $12,000 after a year and $72,000 after six years. That's a whole lot of money for doing a little bit of work. Now, this way is the most work because you have to build a relationship with somebody that has a database and then you have to go find a business. So this is the most work, but this also can have the most um, payoff considering how you structure it. Because since you're doing so much work, you could tell that business you partnered with that you want a whole lot more money than just $1,000 per month. You basically built their business for them. So there's a lot more leeway you have. And bonus way, I included a bonus way, the 11th way to monetize your dojo without affecting or risking your current business. You're getting a bonus. You thought it was 10 ways, but I lied to you. Uh, there's 11 ways. This way is self-serve with the group. I already covered what a self-serve was, which was going back to the people you already sell to and offering them the ability to rent your space out by the hour. But what you do is you'd go to the people that are in the same building as you or people that are nearby, local business owners, and you say, hey, do you want just access to my space for a flat fee per month or you could rent it out by the hour? Loads of business owners would love to get active. I'm sure a lot of them prioritize their health and if you could offer them some space to use their health on their lunch break, say if they have a 30 minute lunch, rather than, you know, they can't go to the gym in that time, but if they just want to walk across the street or walk across the hallway and go to your dojo, they could work out for five, 10 minutes, get some calories burning. That'd be great benefit to them. A stronger body, stronger mind. So, you know, I'm not saying everyone wants to do this, but who knows? Uh, there might be some business owners that want to you know work out or want to just hit a bag or two during some free time they have throughout the day and you providing that space since you're so close is a great value to them now say for example you're in a big building and you go to all the business owners and you find three of them that are willing to pay you $250 a month in exchange to have access to your dojo so that'd be $750 per month $9,000 per year and after six years, that'd be $60,000 for doing nothing. You're just making some friends. You're saying, hey, you know, you have a business. I have a business. Um, I'd love to offer you space to my dojo when I'm not using it in exchange for $250 or whatever you want to say per month. You know, you could use this on your lunch break. If you ever just want to break in general, just come on in, uh, punch a bag. If you want to bring any employees in here, go ahead. If you just want to bring any friends in here, you know, you tell friends, hey, Come on in, let's, or if you want to even have a meeting in here, you know, you just want to kick back and just start beating up boxes, or you want to just start practicing kicks or punches, you could do that. I mean, you aren't forcing anyone, you aren't forcing this down anyone's throat, you're just offering it to them. You know, who knows? Somebody might want to do this, somebody might want to learn martial arts, but not have time to make the classes, and therefore you could just offer them this space. So this is a win-win for everyone. Now... Thank you for watching the video. If you watched for this long, thank you so much. I realize not all my ways made complete sense. I didn't really go into detail how to execute 
uh, all these profit centers because I feel like they're very simple. If I explain the concept, you could go, if you're hungry enough, you could go out there and execute these fairly simple. Like a lot of these aren't rocket science. So that being said, if you still have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My phone number is right here. If not, go out and do this yourself. Uh, go get paid. You deserve it. You deserve to make more money. If you don't want to do this yourself and you still want the money, uh, just reach out to me. Um, I could pull this off for you. Fairly simple. Now here's some um, free sublease contracts. Like I said, if you're interested in doing the first or second way or even any of the ways, most likely it's going to be considered a sublease. So make sure you have some contracts in place to make sure it runs smoothly. Here's some free contracts. Now I'm not saying that this... Uh, uh, ends to a means, but these are great templates that you could start off with and all you have to do is modify them a bit in order to have them up and running. And before I head out, I want to leave you with a quote. If, if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. So I said that and Henry Ford stole it from me. So I want to leave you with that. You know, these are 11 free ways that you can make money without doing anything. You don't have to provide a product. You don't have to provide a service. All you're doing is let people already use the space you already pay for. It's the same cost regardless if you're using it or not and letting people use your equipment. You already bought the equipment. You already paid for it. Might as well benefit from it. This is very little downside and huge upside potential. So just think about that. You know, I'm not forcing you to do anything. But if you're interested in possibly making six figures within the next couple years for doing absolutely nothing... I'd highly consider executing one of these ways. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out and let me know. And as always, uh, have a great day and God bless.